What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I want to talk about the convolutional layer for our convolutional neural networks with PyTorch and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to talk more about the convolutional layer for our CNN. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to continue talking about the convolutional layer in our convolutional neural network. And we're going to be building on what we learned in the last video. So if you didn't see that video, check the link for the playlist in the pinned comment section below. As always, you can see that there. So like I said, in this video, I want to talk more about the convolutional layer. So in the last video, we talked about how an image is basically just a matrix with, in that video, ones or zeros, or it could be zero to 255 if it's a color image, whatever. And we take this kernel or this filter, this matrix, and drag it or stride it across this image to then get an output. And that output becomes our convolutional layer. And so the game is for our convolutional neural network is to do that and learn what the weights should be to then figure out what the image is, right? In a nutshell. So that kind of begs the question, why don't we just use a regular neural network for that? Because that's what a regular neural network does too. It throws information through neurons, it learns, it finds weights for things, and that's what it does. So that's essentially what we're doing here with our convolutional neural network. So why are we using a CNN instead of an ANN, an artificial neural network? Well, that's a pretty good question. It's something you really need to wrap your head around in order to fully understand a CNN. So I'm going to talk about that for a few minutes here just to give you a basic understanding of this. So I've got some Google image search things pulled up here. And you remember, this is our regular neural network. Many videos ago when we talked about neural networks on this playlist, we looked at something like this. So you've got your input layer and then you've got your hidden layers. And these are your neurons. And these neurons are fully connected. This one connects to this one, connects to this one, this one, this one, this one, and then all the way down. And all of these are fully connected to the next layer, right? That's what an artificial neural network does. And it's the process of sort of pinging around in this network that allows the thing to learn. Well, remember when we're dragging our filter across our image, we're getting these outputs and depending on the size of the image, this is a very small little image here, right? Normally an image can be gigantic. You know, they can be uh, a thousand something pixels in width and, you know, 800 something pixels in height. And there's all kinds of data shoved into there. Now I've got a very nice camera and I've taken pictures up in the mountains before where the image was 60 or 70 megabytes. Like that's a lot of data. That's a lot of stuff to be filtering over, striding over and getting outputs. And if you have a larger image, especially if it's a color image, and we haven't even talked about color images, we'll talk about that a little bit in this video. But if you have a color image, and it's a big image, we're talking millions and millions and millions of outputs, these filters, this filter layer for a convolutional layer. And if you're using a regular artificial neural network, and you're pinging around between fully connected neurons, for millions of data points, that's a lot of processing power, right? You need a lot of electricity. You need very powerful computers and lots of graphics cards. And it could take a very, very long time using an artificial neural network. Well, that's the main reason why we use convolutional neural networks, because in an artificial neural networks, these neurons are fully connected. But in a convolutional neural network, let's see if I can find a picture here. Here's a good one. The neurons, the convolutional layer, is not fully connected. It's something called locally connected. There's local connectivity. And you can see that right here. Instead of having this input go to each of these neurons, it's just going to one right here. This one is going to this one and this one. It's going to two. All right, this one here is going to more. It's going to one, two, three, but that's the most. And this one's also going to three. This one's just going to two. And this one down here is just going to one. So since there's more data in the image, right, that we need to process, these neurons aren't fully connected. They're just locally connected. And you have this filter layer, this convolutional layer right here, this sort of light green. Now, in this picture, there is one filter layer. And that's probably not all that common. You're going to have more than one usually filter layer. You're going to do this process more than once. But every time you do it, it's just going to be locally connected to the next layer. That's really a big part of what makes a convolutional neural network a convolutional neural network, because we're doing just local connectivity between these neurons. And like I said, you can have one layer here like we've got, one filter layer. 
but it's not uncommon to have tens of layers or even hundreds of layers. And then after this stage, in the next stage, we do pooling. If we look, remember this is our CNN, we looked at a couple of videos ago, we start with our image, you have convolution, then you have pooling, maybe you do convolution again, then maybe you do pooling again. We'll talk about pooling in the next video, but basically it's taking all of these convolutional layers and you can see this one has three layers, right? And it then pools them, it sort of takes some of the data out and just takes the important stuff basically, or tries to, and then it pulls it all into another layer. And then you might go from there. But like I said, we'll get into all that in the next video. In this video, I just want to sort of make you understand that a convolutional neural network, the neurons are locally connected. They're not fully connected. So again, this is our old artificial neural network. These are fully connected layers. Boom, boom, boom. They're all crazy going back and forth. But with a convolutional neural network, boom, local connectivity. So that's part of what I wanted to talk about in this video. The next thing I wanted to talk about is in the last video, we talked about filtering and we basically use this grayscale image. This is a two dimensional image, right? Ones and zeros. But in reality, you're often going to have color images, right? That's much more exciting. So when you're doing color imaging, the filtering process is slightly different because color images are basically 3D images. And we use basically three-dimensional tensors. We talked about tensors way back in the beginning of this playlist. Go check that out if you're not familiar with that term. So you have height, width, and a color channel, three dimensions. But the color channel is itself split into three different layers. And why is that? Well, if we come back over here, um, there's a good one. Let me open this image. So if you're not familiar, color images are made up of three color channels, red, green, blue, RGB. If you open any sort of paint program, Photoshop, whatever, you can pull out red, green, and blues from any picture. And you can change the red, greens, and blues. You can make the red more intense or less intense. You can make the green more intense or less intense, the blue more intense or less intense. And that intensity sort of determines what color the overall image is, right? So in our convolutional neural networks, we have height, width, and color channel, but each of these color channels is gonna be a separate thing. So you're gonna have height with red, height with green, height with blue, and each of those red, green, and blue will become another filter layer. So you see right here in this image earlier, we have this one filter layer. With a color image, you're gonna have at least three, right? So you're gonna have red, green, blue filter image at this level, right? And you might have dozens of those red, green, blue filter images. Like I said, you're more often than not gonna have tens or even hundreds of filter layers, convolutional layers at this level, right? Or you might do something like, have a bunch of convolutional layers, then pool, then do another bunch of convolutional layers, then pool again, then flatten the image, and then finally go to the fully connected layer. You see here, we are fully connected. See, these are all connected just like this thing, right? So the very last stage of this thing, after all the magic has been done, we are gonna run it through a fully connected layer, uh, but that's for many videos down the line. In the meantime, the process of getting to there is just a locally connected neuron layer basically. And that's all there is to it. So like I said, in this video, I just wanted to kind of do two things. One, talk about that local connectivity, those neurons just being connected to a few at a time. Like this one's only connected to one. This one's only connected to one. This one's connected to two, right? A couple of them might be connected to three, but they're not all fully connected. And again, we do that just because there's so much data here. There's so many outputs that an artificial neural network would just take too long to process all of those if the neurons were fully connected, right? So you have local connectivity, speeds things up. We then go through pooling, which we'll talk about in the next video, and uh, sort of go from there. So that's the one main thing I wanted to talk about in this video. The other main thing is just the RGB thing, and that is just color images are made up of reds, greens, blues. Our convolutional neural network will split each of those channels up. So you'll have height with red, height with green, and height with blue and those blue images, red images, and green images will be different intensities based on the color of the picture. And we sort of then go from there into your convolutional layer. And that's all there is to it. So a little bit esoteric. And again, we're not actually building anything yet. So this might be a little bit hard to wrap your brains around, but it's something we had to talk about just so you kind of understand what's going on with this thing and why we're doing this. In the next video, we'll talk about pooling and I'll you know, say a few things about what pooling is and what the point of it is. Then after that, we're gonna jump in and actually start building out models and doing 
you know, actual Python stuff to start to train and test our model. And so that's coming up in a couple of videos from now. But in the meantime, we had to say a few words just to sort of get some fundamental theory out of the way, some high level what's going on stuff. And I think we're almost done with that. And we're almost about to jump into the actual fun stuff of doing things. But like I said, that'll be a couple of videos from now. We still have to talk about pooling very quick, and but that's pretty simple too. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, almost 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.